Uh, it's a month of love, but we're breaking it down in a whole different way. We started out the month talking about loving ourselves, looking ourselves in the mirror and go, look at you, cute little devil, you. Now I change that up. Look at you, cute little angel, you. <laughs> then we talked about loving the other as what? Another. Another. Now we go into the gap all the time, but let's talk a little bit more about this idea of love. Love in the silence, love that's in the silence. Love in the silence, love that's in the silence. And as soon as I <laughs> came up with this topic idea, my brain just got loud. It was just all noisy, you know? And I don't know if your heads are like mine, but my head is full of noise. There's just so much chatter going on. I mean, it's not just, a, a, what do they call a whole bunch of monkeys all together? A Congress. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Need I say more, right? So sometimes I just have a Congress in my head, you know? And, 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 and then Elizabeth Warren steps up and starts talking and everybody pays attention. But, <laughs> but finding that silence, you know, finding that silence is no easy task. And, and when you do find it, it's sometimes not even what you want. You know, there was this guy that was seeking silence and he heard about a monastery that he could go to, so he joined this monastery that practiced silence. That was their ritual. They only spoke once every seven years, and when they did speak, they'd only say two words. Now, the, the, the monk, the abbot of the monastery, he would quiz them so he could say a few more words, but the, the monks only could say two words. So this new guy, he gets there, and after the first seven years, he, he's the abbot says, so what do you have to share? And he says, bed, hard. <laughs> For seven more years, silence. Comes back seven years, so what would you like to share? Food, stinks. <laughs> seven more years, what would you like to share? I quit. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. All you ever do is complain. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that happens. You get the silence and then you begin to complain, you know? I was out on a road trip to Texas. I used to live in Austin, Texas, and I would go back a lot to see my friends when I first came to California because I just couldn't really let it go, and I still never have. I've got tons of cowboy boots and I love to wear them. I should start sporting some cowboy boots for you guys. Yeah, because I got, t I got tons of care. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they got, I got the Spider-Man socks come up really high, so they come up over the cowboy boots, so I got that cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm driving back on this one road trip, and I'm in my, in my Volkswagen Westphalia, which is four-wheel drive, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, hey, I have no rush. I'm not in a hurry. I don't have to be home at any particular time. And I saw this, I saw that destination. I was looking for this dam I was going to, and I saw a road that said, that had the name of the Eagle Dam. So I turned left because it was like a two-lane ro road, and I'm driving on this road, and it turned into an asphalt road, and it turned into a dirt road, then it turned into no road, which was made me really happy because I was driving a four-wheel drive vehicle. And I was like, this is great. I'm loving this, you know? And I got a little hungry, so I thought, hey, I'll pull over here. There's nobody out here. I'm on this Indian reservation. It's just wide open land near a place called Shiprock, Arizona. And I'm driving on this road, and I pull over, and I open up the van, and I'm making my salad, you know? And I'm making my sandwich, and, and I'm like, like, <laughs> What is that noise? The silence was so loud that it was a noise. Yeah. It was like I could hear it. It was that quiet. Have you ever had that kind of quiet in your life? Yeah. My God, it was just, whoa. To this day, I can still get the God bumps when I think about it. Like I was actually going, oh, yeah, wow, that's intense, you know? But even at that moment, I kind of was like, it was bugging me because it was so quiet, you know? But I did have the Romans 12, 2 experience. I had this, I, I was transformed by the renewing of my mind. In that moment, I came to understand just how valuable it is to have some of these quiet moments. So I now I seek them out on purpose. And I like to share that with you. And that's why I love the gap. That's, what, that's the value in it. I love the moment where it gets so quiet that I want to stay there and I don't even want the next thought to come in. 
because there's so much love, there's so much wisdom in the silence. Meister Eckhart says, there is nothing in the world that resembles God so much as silence. It's a nice idea to listen, you know. Think about the, the wonders that we see, like a sunset, it doesn't have to make any noise, but it's so beautiful, it's so amazing, it's so marvelous. Or this time of year, uh, some friends were sending me pictures from, from Mammoth, and I'm seeing all that snow, and it made me think about a snowy morning when you look out, and it's just like, hushed from the snow. It's like an insulation. There's no noise. It's just silence. Even the crunching, the crunching sound of the snow, there's a silence between each crunch, and it's crunch. It's like, whoa, it's just such a beautiful experience, you know? There's so much joy in that moment. Or my favorite, just watching a baby sleep. I saw a friend of mine with his son, Jeremiah, yesterday, and his son was la laid up in his arms sleeping, and just, just the joy. And to see the father holding the son. Man, you know, holding your, your kid is just a beautiful thing. I know moms get to hold him a lot, but when the guy's holding him, it's just so gorgeous. And, and he was just, I just sat there and stared at him. He said, what you looking at? I'm looking at you being a crazy papa, you know? It's wonderful. Ernest Holmes talks about this. He says there is something so rich in this silence. He says, back, back in the innermost recesses of the uplifted thought and silent contemplation, there is a voice ever proclaiming, this is my beloved son. That's what's waiting for you in that silence, that voice that tells you that you are the beloved of God. We are the sons and daughters of the only thing that is. We are the expression come to life. And when we have those moments where we just get a little quiet, <coughs> then we can go there. Now, I don't mean to suggest this for anybody because I have a hard time doing it, but one way to get there is like to turn off the electronics. Yikes. Uh, turn off my iPhone, are you kidding? There's silence in my iPhone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all I have to do is like hit YouTube and you know, and Google silence, and up comes a YouTube that plays no no noise. It's like, right? I need my phone, but no, if I can turn it off, if I can shut off the TV. And the other day, I was reading the guidebook to try and learn how my DVR works, and I actually put it down. I went, no, I'm not going to do that because I will then start binge watching because I'll record everything that I need that I think I need to see, and then because I've recorded it, I will have to see it, and there goes the silence. <laughs> but Dr. Holmes, I, I I always go to him when I'm having these struggles, you know, because he seems to have covered so much. I guess that's why the book is so thick. And he says that there really is. There's, there's no place you have to go, and there's no particular formula you have to participate in, and, and th there's no posture you have to like define the silence. You don't have to do that, he says. He says it's for us to figure out for ourselves. He says that we enter this inner tabernacle by what route we may. This inner tabernacle. And within us is the divine waiting. And as I was thinking about the word tabernacle, such a powerful word because, you know, when the, when the um, Israelites, during the Exodus story, left Egypt and were roaming the desert, they wanted to take their religious practice with them. So they would erect a place to worship, and that place became the tabernacle, their place of worship. And it was temporary. It moved. And that's metaphysically, you think about it, we are that temporary thing that's moving all the time and spirit is within us. So we are the tabernacle. We are the inner tabernacle. So we don't really have to go anywhere, do anything, assume any kind of posture. You just have to shut up for a minute and just be quiet. Right? But why doesn't it happen? Why don't I enter? Well, maybe the silence is MIA because I haven't maintained intention and attention. Did you check that out? Silence is M-I-A if you don't maintain intention and attention. M-I-A is your secret to the M-I-A. Given some time and deciding that this is what I want to do. I just want to be in the quiet. I want to rest in the silence. <coughs> John O'Donohue Great book, Adam Carr, so many of the other books that he's written, their poetry, his philosophy. He says that, uh, that, that silence is the sister of the divine. It's the companion of the divine. And, and I think it was from the silence that spirit, universal presence, 
divine intelligence, decided to burst forth into creation in the first place. So it's not like we have to be in the silence, because obviously God said, I'm done with silence. <coughs> Let's have experience, you know? But it came from that space of silence. So why go there? Because we get to go back to the original source, to the idea, to the beginning, to fresh newness. And what for? So we can deal with, with the weight of the world. Like these days, the world is heavy. It is at all times, but sometimes we just need an escape, you know? We need a, a solution and find an opening, a, a, a way, you see? And, and Dr. Holmes says that, that the silence, the silence is our communion with spirit. It's our awareness of our unity with good, of our understanding that the Father within doeth the work, the mother within, the spirit within, the consciousness within, the idea within. Don't get hung up on the masculinity of the times where they use that as a particular way of using generic gender. That's just, you know, please let it go. I could have put thing, daughter, something, but I wanted to stick to the, to the text. Silence is our communing with spirit, our awareness of our unity with good. When things aren't going so great, if we can get silent, the answer will arise to move us through whatever the experience is. It feels like it's an experience of not so good. But perhaps it's just an invitation to go into a better experience of life. And how are we going to find that better experience if we don't listen for the opportunity for the newness, for the, for the creation to burst forth into expression through and by means of us, by means of that spirit within us that is waiting to do the work, that's answering the question. You see, but first, what we might need to do is sit in that dark moment. You know? Think about that seed that's in that nurturing soil. It's dark down there, but while it's down there in that nurturing soil with all the nutrients that it needs in that fecund abyss, as uh, Brian Swim calls it, in all of that space, something happens to make that seed burst open and start shooting a sprout down and digging some root before it shoots up into the bright light of experience, you know? Mark Nepo says, we cannot bypass our seeding in the dark if we are to blossom in the light. So don't get all freaked out when things aren't going well. This too has come to pass. Do you want your life to be boring? That's why they got kicked out of the Garden of Eden in the first place. It was boring. <laughs> Everything was just perfect. They had nothing to do. That's why they said, hey, let's eat this apple because we ain't got nothing to do. And then he said, get out. And what happened? good and bad, left to right, up and down, the life of experience, the joy of living. And so even in that song that the master was just singing, you know, hate was in the song, but love was in the song because both of those things exist to bring us into this experience of blossoming into our light. So, you know, trouble's going to happen. That's okay. But I have an invitation for you this week to enter into the silence, to enter into your particular silence, to find that <laughs> mental atmosphere that brings you joy and to shift your climate, you know? A friend of mine this week was watching Dallas Rains, and he called me and says, Dallas says we're not in an El Nino, but it sure is raining a lot. What? I don't understand that. And I said, oh, well, he didn't have enough time because the weather guy never gets enough time. See, the deal is that El Nino is not a weather phenomenon. Did you guys know that? El Nino is an oceanic phenomenon. See, what happens to make an El Nino is the water off the coast of Ecuador warms up beyond its normal temperatures during this time of year. And that warm water sends a uh, like an arm of water all the way out into the mid-Pacific, like past Hawaii distance in the Pacific. And when that big old warm water is out there in the wintertime, more condensation occurs, and then there's more fuel, more moisture in the atmosphere to create rain. So El Nino can make rain, but it's not a weather phenomenon. So we don't need, obviously, we don't need an El Nino to flood. <laughs> you don't need an El Nino to have your life flood. It can just happen just by circumstance. And it's not what were you think. I just want to settle this right now. <laughs> Do not ever tell me what were you thinking to make that happen to you. Because that's not how it happens. We are one life living in the experience of the planet. And stuff just happens 
everywhere and there are no boundaries and so some of us are just receptors of things that are going on and until we as a human species decide that we're going to be done with war done with hunger done with all these kind of things that make life not so good some people are going to get it as long as we continue to make the insurance buildings the tallest buildings downtown instead of the hospital as long as we're going to pay the teachers the least amount of money and the firefighters and the first responders the least amount of money and the basketball players and the football players hey i love the super bowl it was awesome this year but still they get a lot of money maybe we can give that you know, spread it around a little bit. As long as that kind of stuff keeps happening, we're going to have the kind of troubles that we're having. It's not your consciousness that does it individually, but our consciousness is doing it collectively. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how it's happening. That's how it's happening. Yeah. So this week, I invite you to shift your own mental atmosphere by entering into a moment of silence. And this is the part in the service where I was going to read the passage that Patrick read. <laughs> I love the one mine because I'm running a little bit long and now I don't have to do it because you heard it. <laughs> God is so good. So I invite you to center yourself right now. And if you feel so inclined, I invite you to close your eyes as well. And see if you can hear the noise that is surrounding you. Perhaps it's a buzz that's in the room. The breathing of your neighbor. Breathe slowly. Breathe deeply. Perhaps the noise is an inner noise in your own mind. I invite you to reflect on what the inner noise or well, perhaps the outer noise might be covering up. Listen for the kind of noise that you create with your thoughts so that other thoughts may not be able to arise. Thoughts that keep your climate in a stormy space. Take a breath. And in the release of the breath, ask yourself, what are two ways this week that I can quiet my mind, that I can calm my inner climate and bring peace to my mental atmosphere? Ask yourself in the silence. The answers will arise. If not now, they will before the day is out. So before opening your eyes, I would like to offer you the opportunity to commit to seeding your climate with quiet and silence so that you can have more peace in your everyday experience. So that you can love in the silence. And so it is. Oh. All right, let's do our affirmation, shall we? Let's do it soft. Soft. From the love and silence, the divine whispers of my good, loud and clear. Nice. Ah, it's our prayer time. Love's in need of love today. Kind of Does he like that? Yeah. yeah. I'm getting encouraged. All right. All right. So we've been doing something recently. I think we should continue that. Let's continue to make our prayers a collective prayer by shouting out the names of those that we want to have prayer for. And if you feel like you know what the condition is, like, for example, my mother, Patricia, wholeness, you know, uh, if that's where, what you're feeling, let's have it out nice and loud and proud. Here we go. Let's hear it. Feeling the congregation speak, 
knowing that we speak with one mind, one heart, one intention, and we give our attention now to the divine spirit that resides within us, the father within, the mother within, the spirit within that is doing the work. We have made our appeal and made our claim on what work needs to be done, and those that did not speak it out loud have already spoken it in their heart, and the feeling tone is in the room, so the law knows what to do and how to respond, and is responding now with right action and divine guidance, perfect employment, harmony in relationship, peace and comfort and compassion for those who may be suffering through an illness or a loss, a transition or a hurt. And we also make space for those that are celebrating in joy and peace and happiness, feeling the full benefits of a limitless universe that is filled with abundance and prosperity, happiness and good. And it is from the acceptance of these truths of spirit and from the reality that sometimes we must walk into our truth that we are so grateful for the opportunity to speak this word right here and right now and to remember that we are accessing an inner tabernacle that touches the divine and hears the sweet whisper and sings the song of silence bringing love into our hearts. So with a heart that is full with gratitude and a mind that is stayed on truth, I release this prayer into a perfect law by saying, and so it is. Mm -hmm.